Disney Alice in Wonderland Disney Alice in Wonderland One hot summer's day, a little girl named Alice sat up in a tree. She was supposed to be listening to her grown-up sister read out an important history lesson. But it wasn't very interesting, for it had no pictures in it. Alice began to feel sleepy. She climbed down from the tree and rested beneath it. Just as she closed her eyes, a white rabbit came scattering by. Alice sat up in surprise. The white rabbit was wearing a bright red jacket. The white rabbit looked at a pocket watch as he ran. I'm late, Alice heard him say. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear, I'm late. Wait for me, called Alice. But the white rabbit replied, I have no time, I'm late, I'm late, I'm late. Alice was curious, and she watched as he disappeared into a hole at the foot of a tree. Alice decided to follow him. At first, she had to crawl along, but suddenly she found herself falling down into the darkness. Then she was floating. Soon, there was enough light to see furniture of all kinds floating past her head. When at last she landed, Alice discovered that she was in an enormous room. On the ground was a little door with a big brass doorknob. She knelt on the floor and tried to peep through the keyhole. Ike! cried a tiny voice, and Alice realized that the doorknob had spoken. What are you doing? Following the white rabbit, answered Alice. Please let me through. You are too big. For the door, replied the doorknob, you must drink the contents of that bottle. Alice looked round and noticed a small table. On it stood the bottle with a label which read, Drink me. So Alice uncorked the bottle and drank some of the mixture inside it. All at once, she began to shrink and soon she was small enough to get through the little door. Alice was now standing in a garden, and in the distance she could see the white rabbit. She started to run after him, but suddenly her way was blocked by twin boys. It shaped like an um, Easter egg. I'm Tweedle Dam, said the one. I'm Tweedle D, said the other. Who are you? They said together, and what do you want? Alice told them her name and explained that she was curious to know about the white rabbit. She could see that he was darting in and out of some bushes on the other side of the garden. Where is this he? She cried impatiently. Here, there, and everywhere, sneered the twins. And then they skipped away. Alice ran up the other way and came to a funny little house with a circular front door. Suddenly, an upstairs window popped open, and there was a white rabbit. He was now dressed as a page in a frilly wrap. I'm seven minutes and seventy seconds late, he cried unhappily, and I've lost my gloves. Come and help me to find them. So Alice went into the house. She searched everywhere. She didn't find any gloves, but she did not. She did find a box of sweets. Without stopping to think, she ate one, and 
Alice started to grow and grow and grow. Soon she grew too big for the house. Oh, my pounds and the whiskers! cried the white rabbit. Here's a monster in my house. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. And away he ran. But Alice fished about outside with her hand till she found a carrot growing in the garden. She nibbled it. And sure enough, she began to shrink again. She ran out into the woods to find the white rabbit again. Soon she had to stop for a rest. And who might you be? asked a sleepy voice. There, stretched out along a leaf, was a caterpillar. I'm Alice, she replied, and I wish I was a little taller so that I could run faster. I can help you to grow if you like, said the caterpillar, trying to stop yawning. One side will make you grow taller, the other side will make you grow shorter. One side of what? asked Alice anxiously. The mushroom you were sitting on? gasped the caterpillar. Then suddenly he turned into a butterfly and flitted away. Alice ate a piece of a mushroom and soon reached her normal height. She put some bits of mushrooms into her pocket in case she ever needed them again. As she walked on into the woods, she noticed an old-looking cat with purple stripes sitting in a tree, watching her. It grinned. Then, to Alice's astonishment, it faded away, all except the green, which stayed where it was. Goodness, said Alice, I do believe I've met the Cheshire cat. The Cheshire cat reappeared and told Alice that she might find the white rabbit at the Mad Hatter's house, or else at the Merge Hairs. So Alice walked on and came to a tea table set with a great many glasses. The Mad Hatter and the Merge Hare were sitting there singing. Alice sat down. Is this a birthday party? she asked. Certainly not, replied the mad hatter. It's an unbirthday party. By celebrating our unbirthdays, we can have a party every day of the year. The March Hare asked Alice where she had come from. Well, answered Alice, I was sitting with a diner. My cat. Cat? said a squeaky voice. Did someone say cat? A dormouse poked his head out of a teapot in which he had been having a nap. Then he jumped out and ran about the table in panic. Catch him, cried the mad hater. We must put some jam on his nose, Alice thought to herself. I'm tired of all of this. I'm going home. As Alice left the tea table, the Tessier cat's green suddenly appeared in a tree. Why not go and look for the queen? he said. Alice was thrilled at the idea, so she walked on until she came to a big garden full of white roses. To her amazement, out of playing cards, dressed as gardeners were, painting all the roses red. They explained to Alice that the Queen of Hearts had ordered red roses, so they were painting the white or white ones, hoping that she wouldn't notice. Just then, the white rabbit appeared with a trumpet. And Alice realized that he must be the queen's herald. The queen is coming, he shouted. The queen of hearts immediately saw 
what the guardians had been up to. Off with their heads, she snapped. Then she turned on Alice and said, Who are you? Alice trembled and replied, I'm a little girl and I've lost my way. All the ways round here belong to me, said the queen. Off with her head. Then the queen changed her mind and asked Alice to have a game of croquet. Everyone to their places, she shouted. But no sooner had the game started than everyone began shouting and arguing. To add to the confusion, the Cheshire cat kept appearing and disappearing in a most annoying manner. The queen could stand it no longer. Off with its head, she screamed. But the Cheshire cat's head faded away, leaving behind only its grin. The queen was so angry that she ordered the white rabbit to take Alice to the courthouse for trial. You are charged with the crime of cheating at Crockett, he announced, and also with tiring the queen and making her lose her patience. Well said, shouted the queen, off with her head. Shouldn't we hear the evidence first? asked the king. If we must, the queen snapped at him. Call the witnesses. The first witness was the March Hare. He cleared his throat and said, I have nothing to say. Then came the Dormouse and finally the Mad Hatter marched to the front. He wished the queen a happy, unhappy birthday, offered his best wishes, and went away. At that moment, the Cheshire cat appeared again. Look, cried Alice, the Cheshire cat. Immediately, the Dormouse jumped out of his teapot. He ran up and down, squeaking, and everyone ran after him. Alice knew that she must escape. Then she remembered the mushroom in her pocket. She ate a piece, and soon she towered above the cord. Turning to the queen, Alice cried, You don't frighten me. You are only an ugly, wicked old queen. Alice then swallowed another piece of mushroom to make herself smaller, hoping that no one would notice her as she ran away. But they did notice her. Through the royal maze, they chased her. But Alice ran and ran. At last, she found herself standing once more in front of the little door with the brass doorknob. Alice cried, Please let me through, let me through. Then she heard a kind of voice saying, Wake up, Alice. Tell me what you learned today in history. It was her big grown-up sister smiling down at her. Alice blinked and rubbed her eyes. There was Dinah curled up in her lap. I've had such an exciting time, said Alice. There was a white rabbit and I was curious, so I followed him. And, and, and. Alice's adventures in Wonderland were over.